I'm Britt Hammer, and welcome to this week's free image review at BPSOP. I teach Celebrate Your Life in Beautiful Images and Amazing Travel Photos Made Easy. So let's get started. This image is called Bean Glow at Sunset by Lene Carlson, and she writes that as a farm wife, she has a number of opportunities to capture rural life. And this image was taken at sunset during the bean harvest in October. And she walked across the field and waited for the sun to get at just the right angle so that the bean pods would glow as the sun wraps around them. It's shot with the Canon 5D Mark III using a 24 to 105 millimeter lens, handheld ISO 800 1 200th of a second F13 at 24 mil. It really is a beautiful capture. Um, wonderfully done how um, you do have the, uh, the glow, you know, the rim lighting, as it were, uh, around the bean pods. So the thing that I like to look at is there's what I call creative cropping. And that is about emphasizing uh, what you want to play up just based on um, yeah, based on your image. So I'm going to make a duplicate here and show you an idea. And this is something that we do in my classes um, to see if there's another way of, for example, uh, emphasizing the glow. Because right now what I really notice so much is the... Uh, I don't notice the, the glow on the, the, the pod so much as I notice the sky. So, for example, um, right now, just changing to a 16 by 9 crop, all I've done is, in this case, I've taken off from the top. And um, so my horizon is not in the middle, it's slightly below. And some people want it in the middle, some want it not in the middle. Uh, I show you this just because you can decide for yourself. So here's the version um, with it below. Oops, um, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to crop a little bit more out of it so that I put it in the middle and you can decide what you like or what you don't like. So just leaving it here for a moment, do you notice how the attention shifts a little bit more to the horizon line and you know, perhaps you notice the beans and the glow around them a little bit more because there's less sky. So. Uh, what's happening here is in the original image, the sky takes up about, let's say, two-thirds of your image, whereas the area that you want to be your subject is one-third. In the image on the right, just by cropping it, I've now made the bean pod area one-half of the image, approximately, and the sky is one-half of the image. So now let's take it a step further. And my um, goal in doing this is not to crop all of the resolution out of your image, but it is to show how, it's the only way I can show you framing. It's the only way I can mock it up. Um, and so I'm actually going to not go so heavy on these trees. And so now on this lower one, if I just let go of that version, this one, um, the bean pods are a little bit more than half. So if I show you, this, this is the marker is the, the middle. So the bean pods are a little bit more than half of the composition. The sky is a little less than half. So if, for example, uh, there's a couple different ways you can work with this. So one way is framing, another is camera angle. If the glow is really what you wanted to capture, one option is to, for example, get down on your knees or get a little lower with your camera and fill more of your frame with the bean pods with that amazing glow. Now, if that camera angle doesn't give you that glow, then another option is to zoom in or to get closer to your subject so that you fill more of the frame that way um, and so the first thing that I always do is to first find the right camera angle that gives me the light that I want. And then I look to find the framing. 
that emphasizes my subject. And so uh, what I would recommend is to maybe go a little bit tighter because your original image for me is not so much about the bean glow as it is about the sky. So um, that's something that maybe, I don't know if that speaks to you or not, but it's just a different way of approaching the same image. So here they are again, side by side. The original, this one is just taking that portion. And then this one, I've taken a little less. And so I've kind of mocked up getting a little tighter uh, as if I could zoom in a little bit more. There's less of the trees here. If I compare these two images side by side, um, there's less to distract here. Um, and it's just a bit tighter in the, in the shot. So those are some ideas for you. And but it's a gorgeous shot that just that you captured this. So I hope you can go back out again and try different variations where you might also consider it's a completely different story, um, but something you might also consider, it's not your normal, but let's say you were to frame in really tight and let's just keep a little bit of that in there and we'll go to the top. And so what if, for example, you were to go there, and, and I'm not saying to crop your image, uh, but what I'm suggesting is if you were to get closer and tighter, and so to really make the glow the majority of your composition and the sky a little bit less, and those trees over here a little bit less, that will then uh, shift the attention a lot more to your subject. So great capture though, you know, just the fact that you can do all these different things with it says a lot. So nicely done. This image is called Sunset in Dervio by Stefano. Dervio is a small city on Lake Como in Italy. And so Stefano writes that he was walking with his family on a Sunday afternoon and saw the boat, the sun and the tree. And this was shot in the middle of November. He used a Nikon D5300 uh, with a 10 to 24 millimeter lens at 10 mil, shot at f3.5, 1 800th of a second, and ISO 100, and it's handheld. This is a really gorgeous capture the way you got the light. Um, what I really appreciate is that you used this tree as a bookend. You've got the branches coming down. Um, in the foreground, we've got a little bit of foreground here. Uh, the light is coming from the back and the, the leaves and branches are filtering it a little bit, and it, but it's giving this beautiful wash across the water. So now the only thing that I might recommend is uh, this branch here. This is coming right over the boat, so I don't really notice it. So the only thing um, that you might consider, and you can't really change it in the photo uh, unless you do a lot of post-processing, which I don't recommend, it's about timing. And so it would have been so wonderful if the boat were here or if you had waited until the boat were on the other side of the branch because right now this is going right through your subject and I don't notice it. What I do, where I do look is here not because the light is there, but because this is kind of um, the way it's been framed, you, one would expect the subject to be here. So um, that's really the only thing that I can suggest is just to, when you're working, when you're seeing things happen. So in this instance, let's say you saw your shot, you see this going by, um, it's always a good idea to actually look at your shot and say, okay, great, I captured it, can I get another one? So perhaps you did actually take another one when the boat was a little further off um, into the open space. But that's uh, not something that we can really change here. So, uh, but it's a beautiful capture nonetheless. And um, just, you know, play around with your, uh, with your timing. This image is called Cotton Grass, taken by Kate Blagg, and all she writes is that it's taken in Scotland. 
All right, Kate. Well, it's really pretty. I like that you went to black and white instead of keeping the color because that does help emphasize the cotton a bit more. Um, and uh, yeah, so where I'm thinking is there's a few different ways you can go with this image. Um, one is if you wanted to, for example, uh, I don't usually go heavy on post-processing, but, uh, but you could actually go a little heavier with the contrast if you wanted. But I think what would be potentially interesting is to play around with what I call creative cropping. And it depends on the story that you would like to tell. Um, so there's a little bit of white here that is distracting. So I, I'm, the color separation is where I'm having trouble. Uh, but if um, if this is really where we like the the color and the the zenness of it, the relaxation, the gentleness of it, then one thing you can play around with that might be fun is again creative cropping. So for example, uh, you can change the story and the emphasis a little bit by what is in or out of your frame. So for example, this bit of white here sometimes wants to grab the attention a little bit. And so now my intention is not to crop uh, your resolution out, but what if, for example, um, the shot were such that you could say, okay, I just want to isolate it. And so maybe that's a bit boring, right? So then we can go a different route. We can also say, for example, if this will let me, we can say, okay, and I'm just going to drop the square. Can also emphasize the feather, uh, like the, the, the fine texture of the cotton, by making this one a little bit more minimized. And so, what I'm doing is I'm essentially taking just the top part of your frame and I'm drawing out some of the stem, which you may or may not like, but if the emphasis is about the feather. Uh, lightness, you know, this beautiful wispiness of the, the cotton, and you still want to keep the, uh, the feeling of the atmosphere of the, of the field, you might consider going here. Uh, so that's just one simple idea for you of how you might play with it. Obviously, you could also do uh, verticals, and I don't know if your original submitted image has been cropped or if that's fully in the frame. Um, but either way, very nicely done. So, This image is called Rainy Day in Moscow by Birka Wiedmeyer, and I do not have any specs or details. Really pretty capture. I especially like that you put this image into black and white as opposed to leaving it in color. That just helps to increase the mood. Um, and what's also nice is that she's so nice and um, uh, yeah, she's very clearly um, visible, and it appears that the focus is on her. So the question I have is, if you would like to emphasize that it's raining, because the thing that I notice um, is that she's got her phone and she's got her earphones in. Um, so it seems that the image is not so much about a rainy day in Moscow or that it's about that it's raining. It seems to be about her standing up against or close to a wall listening to something on her phone. So if you would like to emphasize the rain, there's uh, another idea for you. And so what I've done here is just to start playing around with uh, where you can, um, how you can change the emphasis. And so what I did, if I just reset this, the first question I had was, what happens if we let go of the wall that distracts and we were to frame so that she's in the, up against the wall and then we go up to her arm? Does that draw emphasis or draw more attention to these people here, which is telling the story about the rain? Because we don't notice the droplets so much. 
So that helps when we compare it to the original. And so the next question becomes, what if, oops, I need to not constrain it. And my goal here is to uh, give you ideas for framing. It's not to suggest to crop uh, your image heavily. So the next question is, what happens if we don't show her dress? Does that draw your eye more to the people here? And so I would say yes. And it's sometimes counterintuitive to push so much of a person out of frame. But as you can tell, uh, it does shift, shift the emphasis. And so the last question I have is, this tiny little bit of the building draws my eye away a little bit. And so I'm curious to see if we were to just let go of this negative space here, does that make it really tight or too tight above her head? And the other question is, does it draw your emphasis more to the people here? And I would say yes, it does. So here are two different um, takes on the same thing. And this might seem a little bit tight, but sometimes it helps to tighten your framing to show the story that you want to show. But beautifully done, though. Beautifully done. This image is by Ahmed, and it's called the Nutcracker. It's shot with the Canon 70D using a 50 to 250 mil lens. Um, so it was shot at 250 mil, f11, 1 500th of a second, ISO 4000, uh, shutter priority mode. So uh, the story is he wanted to photograph a squirrel eating a hazelnut, and this was taken in uh, London. So this is really a gorgeous capture, um, the way you framed it. And so my understanding from your description is that this is completely in camera. There's no cropping to get down to this level. My compliments, the way you have managed to still keep the squirrel's paws in the frame. You've got this beautiful negative space around him. Uh, squirrel's captured quite He's framed quite tightly, but not so tightly that he feels, you know, that it just feels good. Um, also how you've thought about um, the lower corner. The only thing that I would recommend is to play a little bit with your white balance. And so uh, on the right here, I have for you, uh, just so you can see them side by side, a different uh, color cast. And so... Um, your original image is at 5,000 Kelvin, and the image that I played around with is at 3630. Um, and so you can, I'll just show around a little bit. So if you wanted to go warmer, you could. If you wanted to go cooler, you could. So this is 3138 Kelvin, which maybe for me is a little bit cool. But play around with your color temperature. That's the only thing that I would recommend that you um, maybe work on, just to see about getting the color of the fur a little bit closer to reality. And, you know, you've done such a wonderful job at, at getting that crispness and the sharpness and the details. So that's it. You did a great job. So there you have it. It's not your traditional image review. But this is how I work with students in my class. We look heavily at composition and story. So I hope to see you in class. Bye.